Hey, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and try this again. About two and a half hours ago, I had uploaded the full video and YouTube basically demonetized it instantly. And then when I tried to request a review to have a human look at the video, automatically demonetized. They said because of the subject matter, it would not be monetized. So I'm not going to give YouTube a full video. So I just went ahead and privated it. I'll go ahead and go back to what I've been doing which is posting half of the content here. And then you guys can go listen to the rest of the content on my Spotify podcast. But to all the folks who are wondering what happened to the original full video, that's what happened. So once again, I'll be posting half of this on YouTube and the rest will be on the podcast. Thank y'all for the support. Enjoy the content. Hey, you guys, and welcome to an episode of Lovely News Network Podcast. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Friday. So I want to come on here with some news um, about what's going on right now in the school system. So yesterday we had a Zoom meeting, and near the end, um, one of the discorders basically shared that right now there's a new challenge going on and that schools might be closed today on December 17th. The challenge is called the American school shooting day and it started on tiktok and basically the point of this challenge is for children all over the country to call in bomb threats school shooting threats and everything else to get the to get a day off earlier because winter break starts this monday today's supposed to be the last day of school for many kids so somebody quote unquote came up with the idea like well why wait till monday let's start our vacation early so everyone needs to start calling their schools and doing this so we like our minds were blown yesterday when we when we heard this during the zoom meeting so then my youngest son comes home he had a basketball game yesterday and they won shout out to him he is officially on the varsity team so i'm extremely proud of him for that so they won the game and he's like, mom, did you hear about the new TikTok challenge? I said, I just heard about it like not even an hour ago. He said, yeah, they've been sending out notices. He's like, I don't know if we're going to have school tomorrow or not, but they're talking about shooting up the school and just all this stuff. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on right now with our teenagers in this app TikTok? OK, just a few months ago, I did a news story about the Devious Licks challenge and I showed my telegraph group. Just the destruction that has happened at my son's school in the bathroom. Everything from sinks being smashed, mirrors being broken, toilet paper holders just being just ripped off the wall. And it's happened all over schools, all over America. So this morning, you know, he wakes me up and he's like, I want to go to school. I don't want to miss school because he's on the basketball team. He has to maintain his grades. He has to be in school. You know, he's taking you know, this school year very, very seriously. Plus, when we were out because of COVID, that caused a lot of anxiety and stress and all that stuff. So he, he genuinely enjoys school, right? And we talked yesterday, like, do you want to go? He was like, unless they close it, I think I will go. So I said, okay, cool. He comes, he wakes me up. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go. You know, I need you to give me a ride. I said, yep. So we're heating up the car. And now we're pulling up to the school and there's police cars. There's like at least three police cars. I'm assuming that they're there to show kids that, you know, there is a police present and y'all better calm the fuck down. I also noticed, because I dropped him off at the front doors, it wasn't as many kids today, okay? Usually it's like a crowd, it's like a line to get into the school. It was definitely not a lot of kids going to school today. My sister-in-law hit me up and she's like, they pulled my nephew out of school because she just does not feel safe. Now my nephew is in third grade. So there's a big difference between a third grader and a sophomore in high school, you know, who feels like he has to be in school for his grades to get the credit. And then for basketball, whereas with the third grader, he can stand to miss a day and it's not really going to affect him. But you know, my nephew's upset because they were going to do things today in the classroom for Christmas. You know, this is just very frustrating. But before I even go into my little tangent, I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the clips because now all the news clips are coming up from all around the country. I'm going to play several. And, you know, this is not just affecting us here in the Twin Cities, but this is a nationwide issue. And 
you know, some of the schools in Minnesota have closed down because we've gotten the messages like, you know, schools in certain counties are like, we're not playing, we're shutting down. Other schools are still open. So right now it's a mixed bag of nuts. It depends on where you live. But y'all go ahead and check out these clips really quick. This one is top of mind for you out there. A disturbing trend on social media is forcing hundreds of students in the metro area to spend the last day before winter break at home. Others dealing with increased security at school, all because of threatening posts on social media. Some districts say it is a problem they're seeing all across the country. Karis Belder joining us now in studio. Karis, so school officials, they're not playing any games with this one. We are coming off of the deadly shooting in Michigan last week at a school and more recently, we got some arrests here locally over these school threats all going down on social media. That's right. We're already seeing some consequences. In fact, a Newton County teenager was arrested for allegedly making threats against Eastside High School. That teen is now facing two felonies, disrupting public school and making terror threats. The TikTok challenge encourages students to make threats against their school, and it's supposed to happen today. And we've now heard from two districts who are making changes as a result of these threats. APS and Polk County. APS sent a letter to parents saying the threat was shared widely throughout the district, but it did not originate in Metro Atlanta. Also, students may see additional security today in class. And Polk County announced school would be canceled today out of an abundance of caution. A post on the district Facebook page says they've turned the information over to law enforcement and students who were scheduled to take exams today will not have to make those up. And in fact, that APS letter also said this is a good example of why it's important to avoid sharing posts online that refer to school safety threats, because even if they are not credible, they can cause stress and anxiety for students, for teachers and for staff. And even if they're not credible, we still have to take this serious because, you know, we have these things happening, unfortunately, so often, Kara. So we are proud of the districts who are taking this strong response. And hopefully this will start to phase out these social media challenges. You can face charges. Don't do it. Thank you, Kara. story this morning is the nationwide threat against schools. Yes, and it is all over TikTok. You likely know about it. Nick Monticelli joins us now as schools, police, and even the FBI are taking action here in Michigan and all across the country. Nick, good morning. Good morning. I would call what's happening today irresponsible and in some cases ignorant. You've got students making threats against schools just because they want the day off of school. Here's the thing. They're going to get the day off of school when they're in jail or in prison. Schools and police departments all over Metro Detroit are trying to manage what is being called American School Shooting Day on social media. It's a TikTok challenge encouraging students to make a threat against their school, hoping school leaders will, out of an abundance of caution, close school for the day. This is a nationwide issue, but here it means a little more. After the mass shooting at Oxford High School, local school leaders are still grappling with school safety and school threats. Nearly 100 students throughout Metro Detroit are being charged after making threats. As it relates to today's challenge, the MSP Metro Post writes, please make sure you take the time to talk to your kids about making copycat threats to schools. Even if you think your kid wouldn't do that, talk to them anyways. Explain the seriousness of making these false threats. Make sure they understand that once policing agencies are involved, there will be life changing consequences. And over on the West Coast, tech experts are pointing partial blame at social media companies, saying between artificial intelligence and monitoring by humans, social media platforms can do a better job at scanning threatening keywords. You know, instead of waiting for another 24 hours before flagging that account, because this account is saying something, something which is, uh, you know, threatening somebody else, this should have the highest priority for them. Now, there are some local school districts who have received threats and the police departments there are saying they are not credible in any way, shape or form. However, some of those districts are going to have extra police patrols just in case. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Rumors are spreading about the threats to schools and it's prompting law enforcement officers around the region and here in New Jersey to increase patrols, school buildings throughout the district. Here in Hoboken High School, law enforcement agencies are supposed to be active outside of the school when school resumes. A nationwide challenge on the social media app TikTok and a similar one on Snapchat is warning of the potential for school violence today. In New Jersey, authorities have alerted districts to the December 17th challenge. Parents have also been 
been notified, as well as students and staff. These nationwide school threats include hashtags December 17 and hashtag December 17, 2021. It comes on the heels of the ninth anniversary of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting and the Michigan school shooting on November 30th that killed four students and injured several others. Districts are taking steps to increase security, although multiple law enforcement agencies say the challenge is not a credible threat. The Hoboken Police Department took to Twitter to alert the public, saying they're aware of the situation. Officers are increasing patrols to make the school community, quote, as safe as possible. Governor Murphy says the safety of our children is the highest priority, and he's working with law enforcement to monitor the situation. TikTok's communication team also responding, saying they're handling the rumors seriously and working with law enforcement to look into the warnings. Now, many people are responding to these comments on social media, saying why aren't schools closed in the first place? That would be the main reason and the main way to protect the children. Uh, leaders are encouraging parents to talk to their children about the problems of these social media threats. The threats are under investigation. If you have any information, you're being asked to contact police. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. And, you know, it's very disturbing and it's very scary as a parent because, yes, you do want to take these threats seriously. I mean, let's keep it real. Not even, what, two weeks ago, there was a school shooting where three kids were killed and six others injured um, in Michigan. That was at the Oxford High School. So that's still fresh on a lot of parents' minds. But then, then there's that other part, like, these kids just want attention and this is such bullshit that this is why they're you know this is the way that they're going about getting it but then you know me honey okay I gotta go deep with this shit and that's what I was trying to explain to my son and I know some of it goes over his head because I'm you know the weird mom but I said you know you guys spend so much time on snapchat and tiktok and you know this is where y'all live this is y'all's virtual world right I said isn't it interesting that it's always nefarious shit that goes viral on that app. It's always slap a teacher, slap a cop, destroy your school. Why do good things never go viral on TikTok? How come there's never a challenge to clean up the neighborhood, put the guns down, feed the homeless, get good grades, come to school on time, treat people with respect? Why are those challenges never going viral? And now I'm talking to my mom voice because that's how I was talking to him because I was like so frustrated yesterday. And he's like, I don't know, mom. I don't know. I was like, you got to think about it. This shit goes deeper, son. Like, it's very interesting that it's always the negative, low vibrational bullshit that goes viral on TikTok where they know where these is where these kids conjugate. This is where these kids literally live. This is what goes viral. And. Human beings are like lemmings. I've said that time and time again. And there are no bigger lemmings out here than children because that's how children are wired. You don't want to stand apart from the crowd. You don't want to be seen as uncool. It's not until you get to be older like me where you like, I don't give a fuck about what y'all think about me. Y'all kick rocks, okay? But when you're a teenager, that's not your mentality. You want to be in with the cool crowd. You want to make a name for yourself. You want to go viral. So this app is a perfect storm. To basically brainwash a generation into doing nefarious things and getting them felonies and getting them arrested. Because a lot of schools are saying they're going to trace back these calls. And if your child was one of the kids who made the calls to threaten these schools and say that they, was gonna, they were going to be a school shooter and all this shit. And if that shit comes back to your household, your child will be charged with multiple felonies. As they should. Because there's no reason that, you know, these children are so brainwashed that they don't even see anything wrong with doing this. And this is why I say we have to have real conversations with our kids. I will be that crazy mom, but I'm going to go hard for my kid. You will not be involved in no bullshit like this because I raised you better. I raised you to think outside of the group. You know what I'm saying? There will not be group think here, not when it comes to something so stupid. Okay. It's one thing to get out here and get into some shit and get a felony. It's another thing to sit from the comfort of your bedroom, calling a school and doing stupid stuff. But like I said, to me, this even goes deeper than children being lemmings and children being used. As I've told y'all time and time again in our Discord meetings, this world is being ran by AI. Okay? And... Artificial intelligence plays a part in everything. 
And I kind of call everything AI because at the end of the day, it's most likely ran by AI software. I don't care if it's these artificial influencers to Sophia the robot, um, to things that run in the back of your computers, right? The daemons. A lot of things are being ran by AI. And what I'm starting to notice with this app, TikTok, TikTok is an agent of chaos, okay? And I think this goes a lot deeper. If you guys remember, it wasn't so long ago that Mr. Time Magazine, Elon Musk, and we watched a good documentary on his ass the other day that showed us the real Elon Musk and what the hell he's really about. But I digress. If you guys remember, seven years ago, Elon Musk said, releasing AI is like releasing the demons. These were his words, not mine. And then soon, of course, you know, he got involved with AI and now he's trying to plant chips in pigs' brains, which he succeeded in doing. And by 2022, he'll be able to plant those chips in our brains, not mine, but in whoever volunteers. But um, I bring him up to say this, right? Seven years ago, he was saying that um, AI was releasing the demons. There is something controlling these AIs. And, I, and I've talked about it on a spiritual level. I'm not even going to go there on the public forum, but... To the people who come to my meetings, y'all know how deep I go with the whole AI conversation. But I'm going to go ahead and play you guys these two clips really quick. I want you guys to watch this. We should be very careful about artificial intelligence. Um, if I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Start and ask you if you could elaborate a little bit on what we've seen on the video. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where... Is the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control a demon. <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> AI is much more advanced than people realize, and the pace of progress is much greater than people realize. You know, it'd be fairly obvious if you saw a robot walking around talking and behaving like a person, you'd be like, whoa, that's like, what, what's that? You know, that would be really obvious. What's not obvious is a huge server bank in a dark vault somewhere with an intelligence that's potentially vastly greater than what a human mind can do. I mean, its eyes and ears would be everywhere. Every, every camera, every microphone, every device that's network accessible. Every device that's network accessible. That's what it, really what AI means. It's not like a robot running around. The robots would simply be, they'd be like a finger of, of the AI. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So I believe this is deeper. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.